What's up, fam? And welcome to this episode of Rex's Photo Booth Reviews and Tutorials. In today's episode, we have a very special guest. He is a photo boother, a DJ, and he is also a Google Ads expert, not to be confused with Google SEO. So before we get on with today's episode, I need you guys to all do me a favor. Go down below, like, comment, and subscribe. All right, welcome back everybody. And it is my great pleasure to introduce our guest for today, Google Ads expert, Art Armani. How you doing today? I'm doing good, Rex. Been, been a busy day. <laughs> yeah, thank you for taking time out of your day because we now know your nine to five is Google Ads. <laughs> yeah, I kind of held that back for the longest time, but word gets out. So I, I, let's let's get right into it. I think the, the first first topic of the day, first question is a lot of people confuse Google Ads and Google X SEO. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the differences and then what it is that you do. Right. So they kind of go hand in hand. Essentially, it's it's all about Google search, and that's starts with the rudimentary explanation of when you're looking for. Uh, anything and you're on Google, you type in that search bar of what you're looking for, whether it be a product, whether it be a service, whether it be a funny video, lyrics to a song, you hit the enter button and all this stuff just populates in the screen of, of the Google search results. That's what it's called. It's like there's the results of what Google found that was relative to what you were searching for. Um, so the top part of Google where you see sponsored ads, um, those are actually Google ads and everything below that is slightly different and meaning that Google ads, you're paying for a click. You're paying for the placement to be there in front of those. Eyeballs. Is it always per click? It's only per click only? That's correct. For, for Google search, it is per click only. That is correct. Um, and um, is it always uh, like three sponsored or is it who pays the most? It's, it, right? it, yeah. it, well, it really depends. So. <laughs> It depends on what, what type of business you're in and what geography that you're searching from. It could be one paid search ad result. It could be four paid search ad results above above that that fold is what we call on the on the search results page. So so does it get beyond three in terms of sponsored or is always it high does three? yeah we we've, we've seen it four does. yeah and in some instances um, if your campaign is set up as such um, there's a maps section below if you're looking for a business that's you know near you or something like that you know be, below those uh paid ads is a, is a google maps results section where you can also pay to show up in that section as well and then below that is all the seo organic results yes i think that's where we truly want to be but give us an idea of what does it cost to be in the sponsored section are we talking like five bucks five thousand bucks what you <laughs> yeah. know for somebody who's never done it that's a great How much question. Is yeah, that's a great question. So again, it's relative to where you're at, um, who you're bidding up against, and the type of business you have. So, for example, you know, a photo booth company could spend yeah. uh, fifty cents all the way up to thirteen dollars per click. A, a, a lawyer could be up to three hundred dollars per click. Right. So it really varies. Um, is there a minimum to get in or anybody can sign up and say, Hey, I'd like to do $5 at 50 cents a click or who, who designates how much each click is? So it's really the, the marketplace, the auction marketplace, cause that's how Google ads works. Um, it's primarily auction based, meaning that if you've got three, you know, photo booth companies or DJ companies that are in the same market, um, paying for ads for the same eyeballs, you're kind of in a competition. Um, but Google doesn't look at just how much you're bidding. It's also how well it perceives your ad text to be, how well it perceives your uh, expected click-through rate is based upon how long you've been running the account. It can base also on your landing page, how well that's relative to the search terms that people are using in the ad text. There's a lot of different factors that goes involved in that. 
Um, but you can get into um, a Google Ads account, uh, you know, asking for a 25 cent click or a 50 cent click. Um, but most likely what I'm seeing across the country, that's usually about $2 and above um, on average for a good quality yeah. click. Yeah, that could go very quickly though. It can, right? Absolutely. It's very easy to spend is, money on Google. Yeah, is there um, a certain amount that needs to be spent in order for it to be effective if you have all the peripheral things right, tag words, search words, you know, phone number easy to reach, or it just varies. And if you're on the lower end, you, for example, you know, I have a small budget, I do 100, and this other DJ company, production company, they're doing 500. Does that mean that? I'm only shows up in sponsored like at peak times and then at like 3 a.m. when nobody's really looking, then they're going to click yeah. on my ads. How does that work in terms of ranking? Yeah. So the beauty about Google ads is you can tell them when you want to run ads, where you want to run ads, what keywords you want to show up for, and what more importantly, what keywords you don't want to show up for. Um, so you know, when you have a $5 a day budget, you know, the analogy that I use is if you've got a pat of butter, right? And the pat of butter is usually good for one slice of bread, but I want two slices of bread to be, you know, covered with butter, but you need two pats. So um, if you want an X amount of eyeballs or X amount of clicks or X amount of leads, you know, your, your spend, your budget has to be commensurate to your expectations on that. Because if you have one pat so of butter- how does so how does one come up with a budget, I guess? Yeah. I, well, you know, if I, what I tell most people is when, whenever I'm consulting with them is to tell me what, what area you want to target, the bigger, the area that you want to target, the bigger, the budget you're going to have to be. What I'm seeing right now is to get your feet wet, um, in the photo booth business for Google ads, no matter where you're at, you're looking at a minimum of 150 anywhere between 150 to 300 dollars per month that you're going to have to you know invest the proper way um in order to start seeing some results which means the proper traffic coming to your website yeah and you hit on a very key point there is uh -huh. the proper way right so that that's going to be our next question i think everybody out there in, in photo booth land they want to know what is the proper way? <laughs> what do I need to do to stop throwing away money every month, month after month? Right. Well, yeah. It, the the very first thing you need to do is don't trust Google. Is there a top five list? Top three? Just, I'm going to you know, give you the then... first two. I'm going to I'm going to start off with the first two. Number one, okay. never right. ever ever sign up for a smart campaign. Right. These are campaigns that are supposed to be set it and forget it to get your your, your peak, your, your interest peak into Google ads. These campaigns are set up to give Google money. Um, they don't give you transparency into where they show the ads. They don't give you transparency into the search terms that people are typing in. Those are huge, big no, nos because you could be showing up in a smart campaign for you're a photo with business. Do you want to be showing up for somebody looking for the curator app software? No, no. That will happen. Do you want to I show? Want to book you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to show up for somebody searching for a DIY photo booth? No. Do you want to show up for someone who's looking for a photo booth in Maui? No. So that's what's going to happen if you run a smart campaign. You're going to show up for a lot of relevant search queries. Got it. No, number one, just avoid smart campaigns yeah. all. Day. Number two. Okay. Yeah, number two. Number two avoid the performance max campaign. I've heard some people say, oh, I do performance max in conjunction with the paid search campaign. Intent. No, performance max is just a little bit more of smart, a smart campaign on crack. It shows up on display. It shows up on YouTube. I have fixed countless accounts that have had a performance max campaign where the ads were showing up on uh, videos on YouTube for on children's videos, right? on videos for that are like promoting just the, the craziest things out there um, that are not relative to somebody looking for a photo booth that are not relative to the photo booth industry at all and clicks are wasted and it's just a, a unbelievable oh my goodness you just hit on something so if we do google ads 
is that tied in with AdSense on YouTube? So what I'm actually watching yes, your video. Yes, absolutely. So Rex, wow. on your channel, the money you're mind making, blow. Mind blow. part of the money that you're making off of your channel yeah. are yes. some people that have incorrectly trusted Google and set up a Performance Max campaign. Everybody, that's not bad. subscribe that's not bad. to Performance you're, Max. But you're, <laughs> but you're a relevant channel, right? Because you know, yeah. some people might stumble upon your channel who might be looking for a photo booth, but most, in most cases, they're photo booth owners. And so me as a photo booth owner, I don't want to target another photo booth owner. I want to target somebody who's right. looking for a photo booth. And most likely people are not on YouTube looking for a photo booth company. Correct. Okay. So number one is do not do the smart campaign. Number right. two, do not do the performance max. So the question is, what should we do? What should we do? Should we call you? Do, do we go on with these guys who, who cold call us all the time? Hi, nope. this is Google, you know, is it nope. sub something we can, honestly, is it something we can do ourselves? Yeah, you could totally do that. I took on a client yesterday. Um, and before I take on any clients, I say, show me what you have. Show me your account. I want to see what it looks like. And most of the time it's a smart campaign or performance max campaign. That's totally tanking it. Great, twenty cents a click, but you got twenty cents of junk clicks. Um, okay, is, is that a checkbox that you're doing while yeah. you're going through the Google Ads? Okay. Yeah, so gonna, don't I'll, check the smart campaigns. Don't check the super max. You got to yeah. do because at some point, would you be able to identify it? Like, I want women because I, I think mostly it's the brides that are planning the wedding. So yes, I, I definitely want. Right. Yeah. Okay. Here we yeah. go. All right. So, so, I'm gonna, so what do we need to do to set this up properly? <laughs> so what you need to do to set this up properly, there are, I know where I was getting at before is what I met with somebody yesterday that actually had a half DC campaign set up. And okay. he said he learned it by just watching some videos on YouTube. You can totally do that, but you got to watch more than just one. Okay. And if anyone says smart fitting or, or I mean, uh, a smart campaign or performance max, turn off the video and go to the next one. It'll show you how to do the correct settings. Have the proper location settings is number one. Um, some people accidentally launch a campaign. These campaigns in Google automatically default to targeting the whole United States. All right. So, yes. so Rex, where are you located? Los Angeles. And do you want to show your ad to anybody in Philadelphia? No. Um, if it's corporate and it's a national campaign, I would be very interested to be honest. But, yeah, and that's not going to uh, happen. So the answer is no, Rex. You don't want your ad showing to anybody in Philadelphia. You uh, want the people in yeah. your local area. So that's number yes. one. Oh, okay. I'm going to interrupt you. Like, do you do five square miles, 25? I mean, what's reasonable, right? What's reasonable? Yeah, that's Man, a great question. Yeah. So that comes down to how far you want to travel and what your budget is. It goes back to that pat of butter and a piece of bread, right? So what is yes. your budget? How much can you afford to start out with? And then understand that the wider area that you're going to try and cover, the less your pat of butter is going to cover. You're going to start spreading yourself so thin, you may not be showing up enough. Okay. So me personally, for an example, I don't like to go inside the, the, the city of Philadelphia. I'm located right outside. I target eight miles around my house because I want to travel close by and there's enough wedding venues mm -hmm. around the area, right? So I, I, I have a small radius that I target. Now, some people like you who want to target the cities of Los Angeles, you can do Los yeah. Angeles, but Los Angeles is like a measles outbreak. There are so many photo booth companies. You're in competition with everybody. You, you're probably one of the most competitive markets in the country. So, mm -hmm. you know, you got to be careful. Do you want to target all of LA or LA County or what other, all the other oh, counties? Which around? leads me to this question. I got a good question for you. So let, let's say I live on the outskirts of LA because it's much cheaper mm -hmm. and there are no views around me. Can I set up a campaign for an area where, you know, like downtown LA, there's a lot of great venues there, but it's nowhere near where my office is. And it yeah. is yeah, that, you can. Uh, yeah against the rules or is that actually a good idea? That's yeah, the way yeah. a campaign should be set up. Well, think about this. You're really wanting to target the people that are going to be booking at these venues. So um, are the people booking in LA living in LA or are they living outside of LA? You kind of have to know the people that you're targeting. Like where are they mostly at? Like in my area, most of the people that are booking 
that are getting married are in the suburbs. You know, everybody, most of the people live in the city when they're younger, when they're starting to, you know, get their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their special significant other. Then eventually, by the time they're getting married, they've already moved out of Philadelphia. So a majority of the people that I target are living outside of Philadelphia, but then having a wedding inside of Philadelphia because that's where they want to get married, but that's not where they live. So you want to target where these people live, the affluent neighborhoods. Where, like, take a look at where the income is. Yeah. Right? Yes. And target those income. So I just want to be in Beverly Hills. So what should my ad spend be? And... <laughs> no, you want to be in Beverly and, Hills. And how far? How many square miles? Well, you, you right? start you, you start with a small budget. You start with a small target radius. You, th- you dial in your campaign. Once it starts performing a little bit better, like performing well, then you reinvest in the account and say, okay, I'm going to up my budget a little bit and, and expand my radius a little bit. Right? That's my recommendation. But if someone comes to me and says, hey, I want all of L.A., I'm going to give them what they want. But I'm going to also tell them they're going to be spreading their, their budget thin. And then usually. So, so let me ask you. Um, so, you know, how many square miles? You know, L- L.A. is like 50 square miles. It's mm-hmm. pretty big. So, so what, what would your maximum distance be, I guess, for, you know, uh, uh, Los Angeles or New York or Orlando, Miami, something like that? So, because at some point you're going to have to put do you select cities when you're setting up um, Google Ads, or do you put in a numeric number like just two square miles, or do you yeah, draw so a circle? I, I do it, it. It depends. Like, so you can do both. You can you can make that choice if you want to do a radius targeting target. You know, you can actually get a map and Google will show you a map, and you can put a pin, and then and then say twenty mile radius around this or eight mile radius, and it'll draw that circle. And it'll do its best. Mm-hmm. It won't be precise, but it'll do its best to try and serve people only within that that radius or in city. So you can pick city, you can pick radius, you can pick county, you can pick state, you can pick zip codes as well. So nice. Yeah. And do you, you just list them? I want nine zero two one zero. You know, yeah. or exactly. Um, it's still based on the map or uh, both. But you can do both. You can absolutely do both. But, the, but it's also important to put in negative locations. So let's say you don't, you know, you want to target, you know, Los Angeles, but you don't like that. You know, there's a couple zip codes up in northern Los Angeles that you don't like. You can negative location those and Google will do its best not to show the ads to people in that area. So a lot of people yeah. think what I put on the table, it's all about what you take off the table, taking away the tools of Google to take your money and, 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 and misspend your money. So you got to be really, really yeah, careful. About I, I think at that point, I would rather pay somebody who knows um, yeah. what they're doing to help me spend my money properly than to just throw my money away. Yeah. And so with that said, I know you have um, Bucks Digital, right? That's your your Google Ads company. <clears throat> what What is your most basic package? And what comes in that package when people come to you? Because you are the man. I just, yeah. you know, I, is it, are you like tens of thousands? Because I've seen that. I've seen people teaching it's, Google SEO. They want 10 grand. That's kind yeah, of I'm, right now as it stands, I'm trying to make it affordable for everybody because I want to make sure that, um, you know, there's money left on the table for these photo booth companies that are just starting out to be able to have some ad spend to test it out and not feel like they spent way too much. So right. someone who doesn't have a Google Ads account, I'm only charging build one from scratch. But it's how much? Of... Your your basic setup package. And then if they already have one set up, and I'm just going in yeah. and revamping an existing one, I'm charging. There's a little bit less effort for me to go in and you know redo um, a site rather than or, or an account rather than create one from from new. Now, not to say this price is going to so stay how long forever. Does it really take to set up a, a Google Ads account? What's that? How long does it take to set up a Google Ads account? I give it a twenty-four hour period because it's not just go in and set it, and forget it. I'll I'll put I'll put it together. Um, and no, but for for you for for somebody who's trying to do it at home, they sit there, they want to do the radius, they want to enter the mileage, they want to do the negatives, mm-hmm. they want to do the demographics. Literally, how long you know would that take for somebody to set up? Is it like five minutes? Is it twenty-five minutes? Is, uh, is it's, there? A it's a few hours. Many? It's a few hours. A few it's not, hours. 
Well, it's wow. well because you don't want to just sit there and bang it away and not and, and not check it out. So you've got to you've got to build your account. You've got to double check your website. This is another part that's so important. Like you can't just build a Google Ads account and expect leads to start coming. So you've got to go in and test things out the website. Make sure that your website is built to convert too. And so some of this time I'm, I'm conversing back with my clients saying, hey, your website is written all in cursive font. No one can read it. They're not going to convert. So we need to go in and change that to an aerial font or something that's legible. Or I get these people that don't have a phone number on their website. It's like, okay, you don't have a phone number on our website. How are they going to call you? Well, I don't like to talk to people. Don't you know? Because they don't like to talk to clients. They just want you to go to their website and okay. just give them money. Is yeah, that and that is the biggest, dumbest mistake <laughs> because, you know, once you have somebody on the phone, you have the ability to develop a rapport and a relationship with somebody that now they are invested in you and you have a really good shot at closing that deal. If you're doing forms only, and I don't care what kind of funnel you have, it's easy to ghost it and not respond back to you. Right? Absolutely. 100. So put a so, phone number on your website. Number one, don't do smart campaigns. Number two, don't. Don't super max it. That just makes it extra Don't worse. Don't max it, yeah. Uh, number three, make sure you know what areas you want to target because Google Ads then can go very, very quickly without getting the results. Right. And last but not least, make sure that your website is optimized. And what we mean by optimize is at least have your phone number on yeah. it. Yeah, and a form, right? right? And don't make people oh, search for form. it. Yeah, yeah, some people have the phone number, but it's like way down at the bottom in a little tiny font or it's on the second page over there. Why make people work to try and contact you, right? It just doesn't Absolutely. make sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Why make be, it so difficult to book you? Yeah, Absolutely. and it's got to be visual pleasing because in the photo booth industry, we are in a visual industry. It is about the way things look. So your site has to look good. If it looks like it was made in 1990, you're probably going to get the person who's looking for people on Bark who wants to pay ninety nine dollars for a photo booth who will hire you, right? No, we don't really want that customer. No, no. We we're visual. We're a visual business, yeah. so make your site look good. Yeah. It's very important. Your first impression is huge in a visual industry. So, so before you even get in, get into setting up a Google Ads campaign, um, you actually are going to vet their website and make sure that it's it's legible yep. that you can find numbers that there's a form so there's conversion mm -hmm. so you won't even get the ads part until um their no. website is and, that, and I, that would be I, actually a number one yeah i've yeah. had a couple of calls this week that i said you're not ready i said you're not ready to do an ad scans campaign get your website up to date Get a phone number on the page, and most importantly, are you turning down clients? Are you turning down clients? <laughs> I'm not. You know, I want people to succeed, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm just doing what what is right. Um, the other thing is, if you have a phone number, um, I coached somebody else on this today. I called their phone number before we launched the campaign, and it was an automated like, it was an automated computer voice that says, "We're not here right now. Please leave a message." Ouch. So did you really reach a business? So if me calling a plumber or electrician and I got that, did I, did I call the wrong number? Does this sound like professional business to you? No, it doesn't. So you're going to be turning some people away. So if you can't answer the phone, you should have a voicemail greeting that states your business and sounds good. So that the way they know they reached your business, right? So they yeah. immediately changed oh, it. Okay, I got it. Since you're the Google guy, right? I don't want my, my personal number out there. That's for my kids. Yep. And I always recommend having a business number. So yep. speak on that from the Google point of view. Yeah. Look, Google Voice. It's free. So you can sign up for a Absolutely Google Voice free. number. And Google Voice. Can you Voice get one in your area code? Can you pick an 800 number? Do you, can you pay? Um, I've never had a Google Voice number. So I yeah, don't really know how it works. It's free. Um, you can get a free personal Google Voice number and use it for your business. Um, you can get one that has an area code that's close in your area. For example, my area, the densely populated parts of the country, some area codes aren't available. You just have to get one that's, that's the closest to the, to your area as possible, but it's free and people can call it and you can have that phone number routed to your personal cell phone. You can screen the call before you pick it up. They have them announce their name. You can listen to the voicemail message live and cut into the conversation if you 
feel like, oh yeah, I do want to talk to this person. You can immediately oh, cut, cut you can, in. You can listen in while they're leaving the message. Yeah. Oh, crazy. And and um, and it's absolutely free. Is it? It's free? yeah. Is it's that free. Not like the pro version or something. It's free, and you can text. Wow. Via, you can text via this this phone number. It transcribes the 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 audio into text, so you can oh. read it. Wow. And and does it ring differently on your phone? So you had different ringtone for Google Voice and then um for your yeah, phone I, line? I probably could give it a ringtone, but I my phone's always on vibrate. <laughs> um, but what I do is I save that phone number, the Google Voice number, as a contact to my phone. So when someone calls that number, I get a call from Armani Entertainment, right, which is my business, and I see a call yes. from Armani Entertainment. I'm like, oh, that's somebody calling my business number. Nice. And and how much uh, data or storage? Um, comes with that Google Voice, like you know, some people just like to keep their voicemail. They they want to refer, refer back to it. I don't know. I've had this number since 2017. I haven't had to erase anything yet. Wow. Okay. So so Google Voice, everybody, absolutely free. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's free. The free. You know, you guys know a Rex's photo booth reviews and tutorials is not a tutorial without a bonus hack, and the bonus hack is. Separate your personal line from your business line, and you can get it absolutely free. Google Voice. There you right. go. <laughs> and um, what else? Last but not least, what what did I not cover? What? Did, how, how can somebody reach you if they want to hire you and do the plan? How can somebody reach out to you? And you know, are you still taking clients? Are do they are they on a waiting list? Yeah, it, it, do you have a website? <laughs> yeah, got to have a website. All so, that, um, I am finally getting my website together. Again, I don't put it out there until I'm fully confident that it's ready. Um, you can just send an email to artarmani at gmail dot com. Um, I, there is kind of a waiting list right now. I got backed up um, over the last couple of weeks, and then there's also exclusivity. So, I don't do every single, you know, person in a given market. So, Los Angeles. Rex is sold out. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anybody in Thanks. Los Angeles, I'm sold Thanks. out in Los Angeles. <laughs> I, I um, guess I'm going to have to go to Orange County then. That's the next closest. That's it. Yeah, you can pick a different right. county. If it's open, I can do it. Um, but I, I think that's important oh, I'm gonna to put know. your email at the bottom. It's going to be art, A-R-T, Armani, A-R-M-A-N-I, at gmail.com you must yep. have got your email early because that's yeah your name. but it's that's awesome. it's important to know that i'm not giving everybody my secret sauce so to speak because it's not fair let's use the the legal analogy of a lawyer representing both the defendant and the plaintiff in the in, in the court right that's not quite fair so i'll do two conflict of interest. yeah it's a conflict of interest i you wouldn't want me giving your competitor your setup right so no um, i limit it to two two in any given city Excellent, excellent. So, uh, if anybody's interested in Google Ads, not SEO, uh, please reach out to Art Armani at gmail.com or you can call his Google Voice at. Oh, that's my business line. But if you want to call me, it's 215 948 2662. I got it out of them, guys. Ah. Uh, is there any other, anything else I may have forgotten or any additional questions I should have asked? Um, no, there's just so much. That if, if you reach out to me via email, that's the best. Um, I'll answer questions as best as I can. Um, usually what I do is I pre-screen you, say, hey, what city are you in? Do you have a website? I take a look at the website, and then if I think everything looks good, we'll set up a Zoom call. I'll do a free Zoom call first. It's about 30 minutes. We'll talk. I'll, you know, I'll explain everything and then give you a kind of an honest opinion on what, what your situation is and what kind of to expect. Yeah, I, I have a, a question from my uh, studio that I share with Pete over here. Sure. And uh, he wants to know um, what is a realistic ad spend and is it month to month? Or are you tied in like for twelve months, like a lease oh, your part? it's a so, so yeah. In terms of what I charge? No, in terms of a Google ad, oh, you, you say turn... it's five thousand for the year. You say it's oh, $50. no, uh, you can turn it on, turn it off, however you see fit. You have full control. If you say if you in your mind you want to spend uh, you know three hundred dollars this month, 
you just set your daily budget to kind of pace like that. If you feel like you want to pause the campaign immediately, you can pause your campaign. You know, especially if somebody's going on vacation. Like if I'm going, I'm going to Texas um, for my niece's wedding. My my campaign's getting shut off, right? I'm not out because I don't want to take any. I don't have time to. Is do it just the off and on switch, or they have to yeah. call you? Is no, you just go into the thing. The yeah, everybody's. You own your account. If I'm building your account, you own your account. You have full control over everything. This isn't something where if you stop working with me, I take it. You keep everything. You have full control to do the work yourself moving forward, to turn things on, to turn things off, to change your budget, whatever you want to do. It's completely yours. So, so what's a realistic budget? So let's talk real numbers. And for how long should it be run? And what can somebody expect in return? If they got their name at the top, they have a funnel, they have a great website, they have pricing, they have portfolio, right? They have everything that you're going to make sure they have before you even take them on. What What is a, a, a realistic budget to spend? And let's say the goal is to, to make a six figure, a hundred thousand oh. dollars a year. And, and what is like a conversion rate, you know, because yeah. you're not going to convert everybody. But if you're if you're targeting exactly <clears throat> who you're looking, for, what can somebody expect? And I know there's no promises, but I'm just, you know, for the fans. Yeah, there, there. you're absolutely right. There is no promise. So here is a mouse, right? I can't control the other person on the end of the mouse that's clicking on the ad. I don't know how much they want to spend. I don't know when they want to book. I don't know if they're serious about booking a photo booth. Um, I don't know what their expectations are, what type of photo booth they want. They might just say, I want a photo booth rental, right? Um, I No one can promise that you're going to get X amount of leads. No one can promise you're going to get six okay. figures. No right? one can not promise, good. but what is a good ad spend and, a and good, for a period of months? Because it's not so, going to happen overnight. So, so you want to start, be yeah, you want to promise yourself and budget for your first month $300. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so $3,600 a year. Well, I don't know. Right. I never want to say year. Just you, you want to take baby steps. You want to go in the first month, right? And with the proper mm -hmm. settings and the proper location targeting, based upon the expectations and the population, the competition, um, three hundred dollars is probably what you should expect to spend, right? Or, or promise yourself that you're going to budget and give it thirty days, because it does take okay. some time for the account to gain some history, right? Um, and then reassess after that. But again, your website is, is one part of the equation. Your pricing is a huge part of the equation. Would you ever put the pricing in the Google? How, how do you write a good Google ad, right? Because people are clicking, it's a sponsored mm -hmm. and it has your name. Usually you get a tagline or, or what your website is about. Do you, would you recommend, hey, best photo booth, six ninety nine dollars and above. Mm -hmm. Would you ever go? Pricing because that that would eliminate. Sometimes I do. A lot yeah, sometimes kicker. sometimes I'll put pricing in the ad text if they are not way high in pricing. Um, it can it can help out because if you want to deter clicks from people who can't afford your service at your prices, having the price in the ad can deter them from clicking it and costing you money for that click, right? But the double right, yeah, they're not even your clients, so please don't click. It costs me yeah. Money. <laughs> right. So you've already kind of stated, hey, unless you're willing to pay seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, whatever your starting package is, you yes. know, we're not yeah. for you. So I'll put starting from I'll, I'll, I'll say, give me your ah, lowest. Package. Yeah, I love that. I yeah, love starting that. Starting from outburst. pick your lowest. Yeah. It's a loss leader. Right. So let's say you do some people in L.A. do uh, an all day drop off for three hundred dollars. They do. There's tons of them. They're all over the place in L.A. We know that. Mm. Um, so yeah. maybe you start off with an ad of. Photo booth starting from three hundred dollars. Well, when they call you, say, "Yeah, that was my drop off booth three hundred. But if you want an attendant, if you want prints, if you want, um, you know, glam, it's going to be these extra add-ons, and that's going to be the final price." And you lead it up to them. But now they know that they at least have one thing that you offer at their price range. Got it. And and so we all know about um, the failures, right? Failures is not answering your phone, not having. Uh, proper outgoing voicemail, hard to find your phone number at the top. That's the biggest mm -hmm. one in websites. Uh, you don't have a funnel. You did your website in DOS 3.1 HTML. And, and you know, those are all the problems that, that Google Ads does not fix. That's but right. let's talk about the, you know, all the people you helped. You have the phone number at the top. You have beautiful photos, 
pricing, lots of beautiful pictures, very little wording because pictures uh -huh. speaks a thousand people yeah. are looking at photos. They don't want to read and yep. give us, um, give us some examples of some of your star clients or, uh, you know, some of your success stories where you, yeah. know, you have clients went to six figures or, or they, you know, they went from 10 inquiries a month, to a hundred mm -hmm. inquiries a month, something like I've, that. I've, you know, I've had a couple of people that failed, right? They had a good looking website, but something happened in the time that people landed on their site, whether they didn't like the webpage or whether they didn't answer the phone calls or didn't answer the forms or their pricing wasn't what they were looking for. I don't know what it was, but I also have some that did seven, you know, 0.5 ROI, which means they doubled their investment by 7% or seven. 0.5, right? So seven times of what they put in. Wow. So it's, it, wow. Yeah, it's, there are successes and so, there are so failures. So from like making $10,000 a year to making $70,000 yeah. a year. And but, you know, I, I often, and I often wow. see it on the Facebook groups, you know, Facebook or, you know, Google ads doesn't work. It's like, well, Google ads worked to how you set it up and it delivered what you told it to deliver or it didn't tell it to not deliver. And once they came to your website and you didn't hit all those check marks, good site, good phone number, you know, good cadence of, of answering emails, phone number, easy to access, to be easy accessible. You can't blame Google for that. And, and re just responding to them. I, I think, you know, 24 hours is a little bit too long. These people are looking to book and the first person who answers the phone or responds to their yeah. emails is going to have a much higher chance. I heard, I read it was something like, uh, you, the person who answers the phone or responds to email right away has a 65% or higher chance right. of yeah. getting the client. Yeah. So absolutely. yeah, you get all these inquiries, right? Great Google ads, great website, but you don't get to them. Then mm -hmm. yeah, there's going to be a breakdown in the process. Yeah. So and if you, know, you don't have enough money. To... ROI is fantastic. Yeah. I hate some of She's, uh, she's in California. So. She's near. She's wow. near the near San Francisco. I'll let you do your own. Oh, do, we, do we want a name drop? Do we no, want I'm not a name, name drop? Can we, get a, can we get a testimonial? No, uh, somebody in San Francisco is doing seven and a half she's times. Guys. She, she, well, well, she did. Booth's booth, booth by Christy. It was booth by Christy. She actually already said on one of the Facebook groups. Oh, booth that by Christy. So yeah, go she, go and look at her website, guys. Booth by Christy. Yeah, she, she's got an amazing website um, and a really good. Uh, just, just regimen and, and handling leads and working that. And, you know, she actually owns all that to photo booth marketing because she's subscribed to Ursula and Sammy's photo booth marketing series. And, you know, she gets all that, that information and, and tutoring from them that helps her convert those leads. So yeah, you know, photo booth marketing, Sammy, yeah. Ursula, they have a great program. Highly recommend if, if you need, so a lot of people say, oh, I, I need photos or I, I need portfolio pictures. Yeah. And if you haven't done that many events, please guys, do not steal, do not take other people's photos. Yeah. Uh, you know, best case is to buy them and with, you know, like through photo booth marketing, that's, yeah. that's exactly what they offer. And then once you have, you've done your events and you have your own uh, images, then replace those videos, those stock images yeah. uh, with your own. Mm -hmm. So that's fantastic advice. Um, you know, that's fantastic. I, I love to see people succeed and I know you do too. That's part of, you know, vetting the client. Yeah. Right? We want to work with people who, I always want to help people who want to help themselves. Yeah, you know, I don't it mind does. It's not just yeah, poker stick and say free. print me money. You got to work for it too. It's like, it's called running a business, right? <laughs> called running a business oh my god is it and is christy doing it full-time or part-time i don't remember christy if you're watching i'm sorry i forget <laughs> great all right well with that said i, I want to thank you for your time uh again if you guys want to do google ads and you want to do them right uh reach out to art armani at gmail.com yep thank you so much for your time and Thank you, Rex. happy boothing, everybody.